when I look for players, the first thing I look for is technique and game understanding. There's a lot of things we can, we, we look for. It's a, it's a combination of things. But you know, if you ask me, my yeah. first thing that I look for is can they control the ball? You know, which player can how they control the ball? How do they deal with area balls out of the air? You know, their passing technique. Are they using both feet? You know, dribbling. And I'm not talking about skill. Dribbling 1v1 and take players on. I mean just the technique of receiving, passing, decision making on the ball. You know, those are the things I look at first. Mm-hmm. And then obviously there's a whole bunch of other stuff we look at, but you know, that's that's what I see first. Yeah, and I, I agree. The same thing, I look at the technical ability, um, their ability to control the ball, the basics, fundamentals, um, running with the ball, things like that. You mentioned game understanding, I think that's important too, because some kids, you know, without even having a lot of tactical training, you know, just see the game, understand the game. And so those kind of players, you know, stand out. And then I think what's included also is player profiles. Mm-hmm. You know, I think for me and you, some coaches look at player profiles first. Right. Um, but to me, that's not the first first thing that we look at. You know, player profiles is, you know, how big he is, strong he is, fast he is. You know, how much power does he run with? How tall is his mom? How tall is his dad? Yeah, you know, and all of that is important. And I think the, the player profiles are important um, for different ages and different stages. Um, but for example, if you're looking at, at the zone one age group of you know U9, U10, U11 or whatever, I think player profiles you know are important. If you can see a big kid, fast kid, strong kid that has the technical ability and has the, the, the awareness, the game of understanding, then that's gonna probably be a player that stands yeah, out. But even if he is uh, 9, 10, 11, and they're big, and they don't have the technical yeah. ability, but they have the profile, you have time to try to, that's what coaching to comes teach in. that. You yeah. know? But you're coaching, you 17, MLS. Yeah. Like, imagine you get a guy that, oh, he's got a big profile, he's good, but he ain't got no touch. Yeah. And, I, and I, I've seen it, I've seen it. And that's why I think it's important we mentioned the ages and stages, because, you know, at the U17, like you said, the, U, the younger age groups, 9, 10, 11, you can take that profile and it's up to our coaching to develop that technique, mm-hmm. to develop that tactical understanding. But then when you talk about U17, U19, it's guys are going pro, you know, at that age all around the world. So here, if you 17, 18 and you don't have the touch, you don't have the technique, it's going to be difficult for you. So if I'm identifying players at this age and stage, um, I'm looking to see. Um, your technique, your tactical awareness and understanding um, profile will be a plus, providing you've got the other two. But if you big, strong, and fast, but you really can't help me because you can't shoot, you can't pass, you can't trap, you can't head, you can't do anything like that, then I'd rather, I'd rather go with the next player that's, that, 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 that can help us get it done. What I also look for is mentality of a player. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's you know, like, so let's say the player doesn't have the skill. But he works every day to get better skillfully. He doesn't have the technique, but he's he's putting in the work to fix the technique. Um, he might be the big player, or maybe he's the smaller player. But the mentality, the relentless mentality to get better, to be better, um, and to not quit, not give up. Those that that characteristic is something that I, I look for, you know, and you see that in tryouts. You see which players that, oh, this player might not be good. We were doing a tryout yesterday, and I saw a player that wasn't good at all, but he was just found himself around the ball all the time, defending, you know, or, or winning the ball. So it's like a player like that is somebody that deserves the second look, the third look, yeah. and then you determine, is this a player that I can help to get to the next level? Or, you know, again, depending on the age stage and the, the level that you're coaching, you know. Yeah, and I think levels are important, too, because, again, we're talking about from an MLS next perspective. Right. You know, MLS next, you know, where, we, where we're coaching is players that are next with aspiration of being next to being professionals, and being D1, D2 athletes, you know. But sometimes we, you still need to take these into consideration when you're looking at, at um, you know, at whether it's the, the, the advanced type players or players playing at a... You know, maybe not MLS next, maybe playing at a, at a, at a different level, maybe ECNL, USL, whatever the case is. Um, we still need to take these things into consideration. The, the technique, uh, the game understanding, um, their profile and their mentality. You know, I like players that will compete. You know, to me, a pet peeve of mine at high levels is that ball is getting ready to go out of bounds and you'll just let it go out of bounds. 
but then there is that player that is going to bust their butt to save it, keep that ball in. They believe that they can save it. That's that's a different mentality. Yeah. You know, you you watching the game. My team played the ball out, and it's going out of bounds. Can I keep it in? And the player that's just going to let it go doesn't have that desire. But that player that's going to go after it will slide and do what he got to do to keep it in. It's something that says something about that player that they're, that they're relentless. And those are the kind of players that you want in your program. Yeah.